John Raffrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at extruded spline and extruded EPS. You'll notice what I've done here is I've made a little inset using extruded spline and I've put some video on top of it. It really gives the illusion that there is this 3D object that is rotating in the scene. And I'm going to show you how to make that by the end of this tutorial. Uh, let's start by looking at what the 3D extruded spline and uh, extruded EPS can do. I'm going to start with an empty project and I will insert a video track and then insert an empty event. And uh, on that empty event, we will go to the uh, plugin manager and drop in 3D extruded spline. Now it defaults to the uh, 3D rectangle. And let me show you what's different about uh, this particular plugin. You'll notice it's got uh, render, uh, it's got the lights that you can turn on and off. Uh, there's extrusion front material. Uh, everything about this is the same as we saw with the 3D text, except this section here that says uh, primitives and this uh, additional 3D stroke parameter. So let me show you this 3D stroke first. What 3D stroke does is it takes this solid object and it just strokes it, so it just gives you the outline. Uh, and then you can control the stroke width. So you control how big that outline is. Um, so any one of these objects that we look at today, you can always turn 3D stroke on and just get an outline of the object to do some interesting things with just outlining objects. Uh, let me go down to this uh, primitive section here uh, and I want to move the timeline down just a bit so that we can uh, see most of this. Now primitives is going to work in conjunction with the path type. You'll notice the default path type here is a rectangle but there's lots of different path types that you could use. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up so I'm going to go down to the heart and show you the heart path type. Now notice in the primitives uh, a lot of things are grayed out. For most of them a uh, point will be available so that you can uh, take point number one and move this primitive uh, around the screen. We'll just center it again there. And for most of them uh, either uh, X and Y or X or Y will be available so that you can scale these uh, to different heights and whatnot. And then depending on what the primitive is, and in this case it was a heart, you'll have different parameters turning on and off. For the heart, the only other one that's available is the roundness. And so as I make it uh, more round, uh, you'll see that it kind of gets pinched um, at the bottom. And as I bring this down, it really uh, bows out a bit. Uh, so that is the parameter that you can change with the heart. Let me go back and select the next one. And that is the polygon. Now with polygon, you'll notice that uh, roundness has been grayed out, but now number of points uh, comes into play. And so it defaults to five, but you can uh, make it uh, many more sides. It goes up to 10, but if you needed a 20-sided polygon, you could just type in 20. Uh, it would give you a 20-sided polygon. So you can go beyond the parameters here. The smallest one, of course, is going to be 3, uh, if we bring this down, because a triangle would be the smallest polygon that we could make. So this is just a neat way of making any sided polygon uh, that you need to make in your video. The next one we'll look at is star. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the roundness is still grayed out, and now number of points uh, is the important thing for the star and the corner size. So it defaults to a five-sided uh, star. I will increase this corner size, and you can see uh, it almost goes up to a polygon again, uh, that this kind of is the thickness um, of the points on the star all the way until they get inverted, uh, right? So you can get some crazy things by uh, inverting the corner size. I'll put that back to the default of 10, and then we can increase the number of points. And just like on the uh, polygon, uh, it goes up to 10, but if I needed a 20-pointed star uh, or more, I could type in 20 uh, and get that. Let's go and look at the next one. Uh, the next one is the arrow, and the arrow really just has X and Y here. So you can change the thickness, and as the thickness changes, the, uh, the arrowhead changes, and then you can change uh, the length. So I can make this really thin and long or uh, make it shorter. And those are the two parameters you can change on the arrow. Uh, the next one here is the rectangle, which is what I was using in the opening. Uh, again, you have the scale X and Y, and, and the rectangle opens up the corner size. Uh, so you can make the corners a lot rounder. I think I used uh, 25 on the, uh, the intro there. And then you can have them be convex corners, which are rounded, concave corners, which kind of really bite into it, and you, you kind of get uh, the, uh, the sense that it's kind of a plaque. Maybe you're going to use a wooden plaque or a, or a steel plaque in the, in the back of, uh, of some wording. Uh, and then finally, you can have straight corners on this, and you can control the size of the corners uh, with this corner size slider. Next one is the wedge. 
Uh, the wedge is very interesting. It kind of looks like um, a piece of a pie chart. And the two things that you can control on the wedge is where the wedge starts and the wedge length. So let me do the length first. You can see how much of the wedge uh, we have here. So if I just wanted a 45 degree wedge, I can type in 45 and that's what I would get. And then it can start anywhere along uh, that pie. So let's bring it back up to three quarters it was. Uh, and you'll notice you can have this start uh, anywhere. As so you can think of uh, this first one as a start and the length being the finish, right? And that's where you want this to finish. So you can bring that around and make uh, any kind of pie, which is the wedge path. Right, next we'll go to the oval. Oval just has X and Y scaling. Uh, so you can make it taller or you can make it wider. Uh, and those are the two things that you can control with, uh, with scale in addition to uh, a point. So you can place it anywhere on the screen. Uh, we have circle and circle, as you would expect, grays out the uh, Y and there's just the X, right? There's just the size of the circle on the screen. And again, any one of these, you can change, uh, change the, uh, uh, the bevel and, and whatnot in the, in the extrusion. Uh, and then the next one is the line. And the line opens up both of the points. So previously, we just had one point to have the start of the object. The line also opens up point two for the end of the line. So you can position this line uh, pretty much anywhere you want uh, and control the start of the line and the end of the line. Then the last one is the saved path. And the saved path now opens up this saved path dropdown where you can take these different paths that were saved in uh, either Boris Red or Boris Blue or, uh, or BCC7 in After Effects. You can save paths. Unfortunately, you can't create new paths in Vegas. It has no way uh, to draw the splines that you need to create the paths. But you do have a nice collection of paths here, and I'm just going to um, arrow down on my keyboard to take you through them. There's the arrow, there's the bolt. Now you'll notice nothing else uh, in here is uh, ungrayed. Everything is grayed in the primitives, including the point. Um, these are just paths that you can put on the screen and use them as you'd like. Uh, here's a heart, a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, a uh, rounded triangle. And then there's a, a bunch of shapes. So this is kind of a wacky multi-sided shape. Uh, and we go through the different shapes. Here's one that's just kind of a path that's squiggled on the screen. Here's a splat. This is great if you're going to redo the uh, Batman and Robin series. Uh, you're going to want to have a splat to do bam and pow and, and whatnot. Uh, now, if, if these aren't uh, enough for you, there is a way that you can get your own shapes in here. And that is by using extruded EPS. So let me turn this off for a second. Uh, and uh, let me put the uh, extruded EPS onto this empty media. So I'm going to go to extruded EPS. I'm going to drop that down. That'll load. And the first thing it tells me is there's no external media file selected because this is driven off of Illustrator files or encapsulated PostScript files. And so the difference in, in this one, and you'll notice again, very similar to the rest of the 3D plugins. You got your front materials, you got your transforms, your built-in camera, your built-in lights. All of these are the same. Uh, what opens up here in extruded EPS uh, are these options here where you can determine uh, what your aspect ratio is to be used and the all important external file. Uh, so I've got a little star uh, that I created in uh, Illustrator. I'm just going to go to Transforms and make it a little smaller so you can see the whole thing on the screen. We're just going to scale it down. Uh, so this is just a circle and a star and then a, a circle inside the star. And you'll notice it came in with the colors that I used in Illustrator. So that is one difference when using extruded EPS in your materials. One of the things that it will have in here that's additional is keep the EPS color. And you can turn that on and off uh, to have it keep the color of the original EPS uh, or open up the color for you to go uh, take the diffuse color, let's say, uh, and, and apply that. So you can recolor it if you want where you can keep the original colors from the original EPS. And you'll notice if I go to uh, the transforms down here and I turn this, I rotate this a bit, that this really is uh, an extruded rendering of that Illustrator file. And I can come up here to extrusion and, uh, and increase the extrusion, make it deeper. Uh, I could uh, change the bevel and make it thicker, right? And really kind of change the appearance of this uh, extruded EPS file. Let me go rotate it back for you so you can see this. Uh, and, and let me change the file. I uh, created a second file here with just a bunch of uh, random shapes that I put in. Uh, and there you see each one comes in with its color. Uh, all the subtleties of the color are maintained from the Illustrator file. So you can really bring uh, anything that you want uh, in the way of uh, illustrations into um, Boris Extruded EPS and make them 3D uh, and put them in your video. Okay, now let's look at how I built 
uh, the opening scene that you saw. So I'm going to uh, create a new project and I want to get some media in this project. Uh, and I, I think the first one I used here was uh, the hi-hat video. So let me drop that video on the timeline. The video is 4.3 in a 16.9 timeline. So I'm going to open pan crop, right click and say match output aspect. And you'll notice there's some black on the edges here. And so I'm going to uh, bring this in just a bit to get rid of that black. Okay, now I'm going to go to my um, plugin manager and I want to take the extruded spline and drop that on here. And you'll notice right away that the video went away. And so what we have to do to get the video back is go down to uh, front material and tell it that we want to use that layer, that source layer as the video and now the video comes in. Uh, one thing I want to do here is I want to now scale my material. So I'm going to go back down to the material uh, and I want to scale this uh, to 50% of what it was. And that got my whole video back in there. Now I'm going to go rotate this so you can see uh, what we have. I'll go back down to the transforms and rotate this for you. And you'll notice that as I rotate, I've got the video on the sides. And I don't want video on the sides. So what I want to do is go up to my materials. And I want to say rather than number one, same on all the sides, I want to use two materials, front, back, bevel. And that will give me the ability to open up and use a different material on the side. And I'll open the side material and I'm just going to pick a... Uh, a chrome texture here, like a brushed metal, just to give it some brushed metal on the side. Uh, I also want to go up to the extrusion and I want to make this convex and maybe just bring this in just a little and we'll go rotate that so we can see where we are now. That looks really nice. Uh, and I think one of the other things I did was I rounded that corner more. So I'm going to go back up to my primitive, uh, to my corner side, make that 25 and just round that corner just a bit. So now I've got my, uh, my primitive all complete here. I'm gonna use the positioning in transforms to position it up in the corner of the screen. And then here's where uh, the magic happens. What I did was, I'm gonna shorten this up. And actually I wanted this to be uh, about five seconds. So let me double click here and type in five, zero, zero. That'll give me a, a five second length. Uh, and now I've got this uh, hi-hat in the, in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Now it's time to rotate it. So I just want to rotate the, uh, the Y parameter here. Uh, and so I click on the Animate button to bring up the little timeline, the animation timeline. Uh, and then I will go to uh, one second. And I want to create a keyframe there. Um, I then want to come to four seconds and create a keyframe there. And now I want to go back to the beginning. So I'm going to click over here to go back to the beginning. And I actually wanted this to be rotated in the beginning because here is how I get different videos to appear in the rectangle. So that's minus 90 to make that exact. And at this point, it will be, let me, let me uh, I'll turn on sync cursor so we can see what's happening. It'll rotate. Uh, it'll stay for that long, uh, which is uh, the three second duration. And then at the end, I want it to rotate to 90. Okay, let's, uh, let's just watch that. So it's going to rotate, stay for a while, and then it's going to rotate the other way. Right? So, so now when you loop that, it looks like uh, it's just rotating back uh, again. Then where the illusion happens is I'm going to come to the Explorer and I'm going to drop in the next thing, which let's say is the Spanish guitar. And we'll make that five seconds. And then I am going to right click and say copy, click the Spanish guitar, right click, say paste event attributes. It now has all those attributes. And now watch it when I play these two. The Spanish guitar rotates and it's back to the hi-hat. And then the hi-hat rotates and it switches to Spanish guitar. So that wraps it up. Hopefully you now understand Extruded Spline and Extruded EPS a little better. If you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Refrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.